Today we're going to be talking about Mustang Mach-E charging. Now, if you follow me on my channel here or on Inside EVs, you'll know I've already produced a few videos on Mustang Mach-E charging. The thing is they were long comprehensive videos and while they were greatly appreciated by a lot of our followers, some people said, you know, Tom, couldn't you condense this down a bit? I don't have 40 minutes to watch a video. So that's the purpose of today's video. I'm gonna to try to cram as much as I can into 15 minutes to cover everything you need to know about charging the Mustang Mach-E in 15 minutes or less. We're gonna hop right over to that now, but first, don't forget, if you like what we're doing here on State of Charge, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content. So let's jump right into it then. Every electric vehicle comes with a charger. Actually, they're called EVSC, Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment, but most people refer to them as chargers and that's why we're calling them chargers. Let's take a look at what Ford provides with their mobile connector. Now the mobile connector is a level one slash level two charger. That means it can charge from either a level one or level two charging source. Ford gives you adapters. This plugs into a regular household outlet. That's level one. This adapter here plugs into a NEMA 1450 outlet, which is a 240 volt outlet. Most people won't have that in their house unless they have a welder or some type of heavy equipment in their garage. But you can have it installed in your garage to plug this in. So let's take a look at this unit. The adapters fit on the top. They snap in. You got to get them the right way. And they're actually very hard to pull out. Some people have contacted me said, how do I switch the adapters? It won't pull out. You have to really pull it hard in order to get it out to switch between level one and level two. So let's talk about level one. Level one's a regular 120 volt household outlet. Every electric vehicle can charge from a regular household outlet, but it is very slow charging. You'll only get about three miles of range per hour with the Mustang Mach-E. So unless you only drive 20 or 30 miles a day, you probably need something faster than level one charging. That's level two charging. And Ford provides you with this charger that can charge on level two. The only thing you have to do is install a NEMA 1450 outlet in your garage or wherever you're going to charge. Have an electrician do it. It shouldn't cost more than a few hundred dollars, but every household is different. Some are more complicated, they cost more, but a simple installation should be two or $300 to install a NEMA 1450 outlet. If you do that, you can charge at 32 amps with this mobile connector. That's good enough for somewhere between 22 and 25 miles of range per hour. That's pretty good considering the Mustang Mach-E has a range of somewhere between 211 and 300 miles depending on the trim that you have. Most people don't fully deplete their battery in a day. They'll only drive 40 or 50 miles. So if you have a charger that can recharge at 20, 25 miles an hour, after a couple of hours, you're back to 100%. A lot of people think that they need to get the absolute fastest charging at home when most people don't have to. If I had a Mustang Mach-E, I would just use this supply charger. It's a great unit. Install a NEMA 1450 outlet and call it a day, you're set. However, if you do wanna charge faster, you can get a faster charger station, charging station. Either the Ford um, Connect home charger that mounts on the wall or from a third party vendor, uh, they all will work the same. You don't need the Ford's equipment. All electric vehicles in, sold in North America use this standard J1772 connector. They all use the same connector, except Tesla vehicles, but we're gonna get into that a little bit later. So any of the charging stations that you buy, other than a Tesla charging station, will charge the Mustang Mach-E fine. Now, if you were to upgrade to a 48 amp charger, you're gonna charge then at a rate of somewhere between 30 and 32 miles of range per hour, maybe even as much as 35, depending on how efficiently you drive. So there you could see the difference. You might get somewhere between 22, 20, 25 miles of range with this mobile connector, maybe 30 to 35 miles of range per hour if you buy the higher powered Ford Connect charging station. However, as I said, most people don't need it. If you wanna spend the money and have a fancy wall box hanging on your wall, that's fine, but you probably don't need it. So now that we covered home charging, let's talk about public charging. With home charging, we talked about level one and level two charging. With public charging, it's mostly level two and DC fast charging, 
sometimes called level three, but the proper term is actually DC fast charging. Now with level two public charging, it's basically the same as level one. Uh, you, most public level two chargers will deliver the amount of power that Ford's mobile connect will and give you somewhere between 22 and 25 miles of range per hour. Now with DC fast chargers, it's a little more complicated because there are DC fast chargers that are low powered as little as 24 kilowatts, some that deliver as much as 350 kilowatts. Now the Mustang Mach-E can accept up to 150 kilowatts, uh, most versions of it. The base select uh, Mach-E can only accept up to 115 kilowatts, but all the other versions of the Mach-E can accept up to 150. Now it only does that for a very short period of time. So it's not like you get the 150 kilowatts the whole time. It only does it for about two minutes, then it starts to ramp down. DC fast charging is much different than level one and level two charging, where the car holds the same charge rate for almost the entire charging session. Uh, we have a lot of videos here on State of Charge that explain charging curves, so you might wanna check those out. Now to charge in public, you can use your Ford Pass app. That has uh, most of the networks that are available today, Ford has gotten together and put them all in the one app. So you don't need to get, have membership with all the different charging networks. It makes it very convenient. The only downside is there are certain occasions where you pay more to charge through your Ford Pass app than you do if you had the app for that specific network. So um, do some research, figure out which way works better for you. It's not a bad idea to also have a membership with the DC fast charge networks like Electrify America, EVgo, Green Lots. The Maki -E has this technology called plug and charge, which it's just becoming available now. The Maki -E was one of the first vehicles to have plug and charge capability. That allows you to just pull up to the charging station and plug the vehicle in and it automatically communicates to the charger and bills your pre-established uh, account that you set up through your Ford Pass. Currently only Electrify America and some green lot stations have plug-in charge, uh, but soon it should be available everywhere. One of the things I've noticed is many of my followers are reaching out to me and asking me, how do they set up plug-in charge? Evidently, some of the personnel at Ford dealerships haven't been trained on this. They don't know how to do it. So the customer gets the car and then they can't initiate plug-in charge. It's a seven step process. You have to first log into your My Ford account and click on the My Ford Vehicles icon. You then click on Connected Services and walk through the process. This includes adding your credit card so you can be billed. Then you log into the Ford Pass app and click Vehicle at the bottom of the screen. You next click on Manage EV. Finally, you click on Ford Pass Charging Network, then Plug and Charge, and then you slide the Plug and Charge tab to the right to turn on Plug and Charge, and your vehicle will be Plug and Charge enabled. Currently, only Electrify America has their entire network Plug and Charge enabled. Ford has partnered with Electrify America and provides every uh, Mach-E owner 250 kilowatt hour of free charging when they get their Mach-E. Now, you might wonder, well, how much is that gonna get me? So uh, if you have the extended range battery pack, you have about 88 kilowatt hours of usable energy. So 250 uh, kilowatt hours are free, 88 kilowatt hours is a full tank. You could do the math. If you have the standard range battery pack, you have 68 kilowatt hours of usable energy. Again, just divide 250 by 68. It'll tell you how many free fill-ups you get with the offer that Ford is providing. However, Electrify America isn't the only network out there. There's networks like ChargePoint, Blink, GreenLots, EVgo, and depending on where you live, there may be more of those chargers in your area. What I always like to recommend is that you download apps like PlugShare or Chargeway. I find them much more useful than the Ford Pass app or even the in-car navigation system for finding charging stations. Another advantage of, of downloading these apps is they tell you how much each station costs because public EV charging varies greatly. You could pay $10 to charge your Mach-E at one station and right down the block it might cost you $50. It's that much of a difference. So download these apps, know what you're paying before you go there. It's a big help. They'll also tell you 
if you can charge there. There are some DC fast chargers that use a CHAdeMO connector. CHAdeMO is used by Nissan and Mitsubishi, and you can't use a CHAdeMO charger with the Mustang Mach-E. Now, the good news is most all the charging stations use the CCS connector for DC fast charge. I mentioned the J1772 is for level one, level two, but for DC fast charge, the Mustang Mach-E uses a connector called the CCS or combo plug. And if you pull up to a CHAdeMO charging station, just like if you pull up a Tesla supercharger, you won't be able to charge. And quite honestly, the in-car navigation that Ford has doesn't filter out the stations you can't use properly. So you wanna use an app like PlugShare or Chargeway so you know before you get there if you can plug in. So I mentioned before that you can use a Tesla charger to charge the Mustang Mach-E if you have the right adapter. These are two examples of T Tesla to J1772 adapters. Now, one thing I wanna get clear here so that you completely understand, there are some really cheap adapters on the market today that are not built well, they're not safety certified, and quite simply, they cannot handle the power that the Mach-E can accept, and you will have a problem if you get one of these. I highly recommend you do not buy a Tesla adapter unless it can accept at least 50 amps. There are some budget ones out there, super cheap for 40 amps. What'll happen is the Mustang will call for more than 40 amps. The Tesla charger will deliver more than 40 amps. And you've got this thing in the middle that can't accept more than 40 amps. What's gonna happen? It's gonna melt, it's gonna burn out. You could have a fire. You could damage the inlet of your Mustang Mach-E. Could cost you thousands to repair. Don't buy a cheap Tesla to J1772 adapter. I have links to the products that I recommend in the description of this video. Let's take a quick look at a couple more cool features the Mach-E has with regards to charging. First tag the Mach-E icon, then hit settings. Next, we're gonna go under this charge icon here. You'll notice there's two line items under preference. Let's take a look at charge scheduling first. Charge scheduling allows you to do two things, and it's all based on location. This is a list of the last places that we charged with this vehicle. Now let's say 49 Mall Drive was your home address. You would set it as your home address, and then every time the vehicle charges at that location, you can do a couple of things. First of all, you could set a maximum charge level. Let's say you only wanna to charge to 90%. You could set it to 90%. Now, every time you charge at home, the vehicle will shut off when it's 90% state of charge. You can set that all the way down to 50%. If you don't need a lot of daily driving range, it doesn't hurt to set the car to max out at 85 or 90% charge. Not charging to 100% on a daily basis can help to extend your battery life. There's one more thing that we can do with this. Click next. We can also set a timer for when the vehicle charges. This is useful if you're on a time of use electricity plan and you pay less money for off-peak charging. If that's the case, you can set the vehicle so it'll only charge during a set time. If you have this off-peak charging, say after midnight, you set the car so it won't start charging till after midnight. Even if you come home at five o'clock and plug the car in, the car knows that, okay, I'm at home. I don't want to start charging till midnight. And then it begins charging at midnight or whenever you have it set to start charging. Let's back out of here and take a look at the next feature. Okay. Departure and comfort. So this allows you to schedule the car to precondition. That means the car will turn itself on at a set time before you're gonna leave every day and either warm up or cool down the cabin. It'll get the car nice and ready for you to go. This is particularly good feature in cold weather regions where it's really cold and you wanna warm up the car before you get in it. Because if you wait until you're driving the car, that it's going to draw energy from the battery and it's gonna reduce your driving range. But if you set this to precondition and you set the departure time, let's say you leave for work every morning at eight o'clock, you would set it for the five weekdays at eight o'clock. Before that, the car is gonna turn itself on, warm itself up. Now it's doing that while it's plugged in so that it's drawing that power from the grid, not your battery. So you leave with a completely warmed car and 100% or whatever level you've set it at, state of charge battery, therefore extending your driving range. So let me mention a few more things before we wrap this up. I forgot to mention that the mobile charger comes with a cradle 
that allows you to mount it on the wall so it's not dangling from the plug. You don't want to leave your charger just dangling from the outlet. You want it secured to the wall. Secondly, let's review the speeds of charging because you know that's really important to a lot of people. Level one charging, you're going to get somewhere around three to four miles of range per hour of charging. Level two charging, depending on if you use the Ford mobile connector or a, a higher powered charger, you're going to get somewhere between 22 and 32 miles of range per hour. With DC fast charging, you can get up to seven miles of range per minute. And you should be able to charge your Mach-E, uh, even the extended range battery pack Mach-E, in from 10% to 80% in about 47 to 50 minutes. I did a DC fast charge test and I charged this, that vehicle from 0% to 80% in 47 minutes. Ford only promises 10% to 80% in 52 minutes, but I think they were under promising and wanted to over deliver. The standard range battery pack will charge faster uh, because it's smaller, obviously. So that brings us to the end of our how to charge the Mustang Mach-E in under 15 minutes. I hope I did it in under 15 minutes. In any event, if I missed anything, please mention it in the comment section below. Help out your other Mach-E owners. I hope I got everything. I tried to do it as quick as I can because I know, as I said, some people wanted me to do this in a condensed version. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing here on State of Charge, please click the like button so others can find this channel and then subscribe and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge.